Hello, I'm Phil Gower from Phil Gower Bird Photography and this is The Bird Table. Hello and welcome to the very first episode of The Bird Table. I'm Phil Gower and I'm a bird photographer based here in Wiltshire. Now here at The Bird Table we're going to explore everything bird photography. We'll be sharing images, I'll show you mine if you show me yours, and we'll be reviewing uh, photography gear, camera settings, our favourite bird photography techniques and the essential field craft needed to take stunning bird images. All this and more at The Bird Table. We'll also visit and report on some of the best birding sites across the UK and some in Europe and we'll keep you posted on all the latest birding news. We'll also keep tabs on Hayward Nature Reserve and this is a reserve we're building right here in Wiltshire. We'll also be meeting some special guests, talented bird photographers from around the UK. And we'll be finding out about what makes them tick, exploring the gear they use and, and how they use it. We'll be looking at their favourite images and we'll be asking them to share some of their favourite bird photography locations. Now we've got lots to cover in the weeks ahead, but what's in store for you today? At the bird table today, we'll be taking a look at a new piece of gear I bought recently, the Valbon Hide Clamp 2. We'll also have a special guest streaming in all the way from the Cotswolds and I can't wait for that. But before that, I thought you might like to take a look at my credentials, so to speak. So we're about to see a selection of my images taken during the last few years. Now, I started bird photography in 2013. Now, I bought into the Canon system at the time, but more recently I've been using Sony gear. For both systems, my prime lens has been the 600 f4. So let's take a look at some of my images.
So there's a few of my images and I hope you enjoyed having a look at them. Now in the time I've been taking bird images I've learned a lot about the best camera settings for me and for my style of bird photography. I thought you'd like to know how I use my gear. Now everyone has their own way of operating and that's one of the brilliant things about bird photography. But here's a quick overview of my go-to settings. So that's my go-to camera settings. It'd be really good to hear about yours though. So please let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like me to cover my camera settings in more detail, again, let me know in the comments below. Okay, it's uh, time to have a look at some photography gear. And let's start with this. This is the uh, Valbon High Clamp 2. Uh, a recent acquisition of mine and you can pick these up for about 35 pounds off the internet uh, if, if you shop around and I have to say it's been a useful addition to my kit bag. Now the majority of my images are taken handheld or resting on a support like a tree, a post or a window frame but all of my flight shots are taken handheld because for me flight photography is about hand-eye coordination it's about locking onto the subject as quick as possible and there's not really a place for a tripod in that. Well, not in my world anyway, but I appreciate a lot of people do use them. So, where does this clamp fit in? Well, I took it along to Hayward Nature Reserve just to test it out. And it so happens I was in for quite a surprise that day. Let's take a look. So, here we are in the Hayward uh, Hyde. Haywood Nature Reserve Hyde and we're looking at just setting up this the Valbron Hyde Clamp 2 to see what this is like um, and what it's what it's supposed to do is replace the need for a tripod or certainly the legs of a tripod in a, in a hide so it's basically it's just straightforward clamp to a rail so in the hide you need a rail uh, or a shelf but that rail or shelf can't be any more than 4.5 centimeters thick so I've got a rail here is about four centimeters so I'll just attach the clamp to the rail and all it does it comes with four sleeves that I've, I've put one sleeve in the middle of the device here four sleeves that accommodates pretty much any uh, center column of a tripod so I've got a center column of a tripod here so good news is if you can fit this up in a hide it means you don't have to take the tripod legs and the uh, well the tripod legs with you but you can just take the center column and the head so I'll slide this into the uh, the clamp and pretty much that's 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 all it is um, so I can now attach a camera Got my camera put that on the uh, on the clamp pretty much that's it so obviously you use it in the normal way you'd use your, your tripod head um, and obviously what it means is you've got a lot more space in in a confined hide so quite a useful device um, hang on a minute Sparrowhawk just landed at the uh, drinking pool. Let's see if I can have a shot. a sparrowhawk just landed at the drinking pool. Um, I managed to take the camera off the tripod but I couldn't actually stick it out of the window so I had to take it through the slit and the, uh, the scrim but I think I got a few shots. Let's take them home and have a look.
So there you have the uh, Valbon High Clamp 2, a great little device for the right situation. For me, tripods are too restrictive in the field and are just annoying to carry around. So the clamp, for me, is a good addition to my kit bag. Now, I appreciate tripods have their pros, and I would use them, for example, sitting around all day in a bag hide or a portable hide, waiting for a bird to arrive, or when I'm shooting in a paid hide through glass, for example. Uh, but that's what I think, uh, but I'd like to know what you think, so let me know in the comments below. So, on to the part the show I've been really waiting for. It's time to meet our special guest. So, he's a retired vet an avid and extremely knowledgeable birder who regularly travels around UK, Europe and further afield birding. In recent years, he's turned his attention to bird photography and with amazing success. So it's time to welcome Richard Tyler. Hello Richard, good afternoon and welcome to the bird table. How are you? Nice to see you. That's good, nice to see you as well. So Richard, I've told everybody that uh, you come from the Cotswolds and how, how long have you been in that part of the country? Well, we, we moved here with my job um, as a veterinary surgeon, so I came here, in, well, we've been here since 1989, which would be, what, 31 years now. Crikey, that's, a, yeah, a lifetime almost. But, uh, so, a great part of the country to be for birding, I'd imagine? Yeah, there are, there are some good things to be seen in the area. There are a few quite sort of special birds in the area, so that's nice for local birding. Um, but also, it's great to be in a central location. Uh, for me, being a keen birder as I am, it gives me easy access to several other parts of the country. Yeah, absolutely. And what I remember of the Cotswolds, like rolling hills, dry stone walls, really picturesque villages, and that's the part yeah. of the Cotswolds where you you live, I, I, I assume? Yeah, there are, I mean, there are, some of the villages around here are like sort of honey pot villages for the tourists, so they get very busy, but equally there are lots of lovely little villages just off the tourist route, which obviously we know living here, and um, Superb. Yes, beautiful, beautiful place. Superb. And I've, I've told the viewers that you've, uh, you're you an ex or a retired vet. So how long were you a vet? I was a veterinary surgeon for 33 years. And a great life. I, I get that, that kind of married with the um, with the birding as well. It's sometimes, yes, it did sometimes, because some <laughs> of my work, well, obviously, being an equine vet, some of my time oh, was right. out on the road visiting horses. So uh, it got me to know this area very well, and obviously some good birding spots, and on occasions between calls, I have been known to stop to look at birds here and there. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so, I, I, so, when did you get into birding then? Oh, Phil's, oh, I mean, three, four years of age, I've been a birder oh, right. all my life. Oh, fantastic. I've uh, always been keen. Yeah, I remember from a seven-year-old, when I had my first interest in birds was, um, I used to play a lot of sport, but I used to also, where we used to play, used to be a wreck with a wood. And we used to walk around the wood regular and we used to see or find bird nests. So that really got me started. Yes. Um, I think a lot of us got keen with, with, with looking for bird's nests and getting to know birds. Our people of our era. <coughs> Absolutely, yeah. I know, not me, but I know quite a few of my friends used to collect eggs. And obviously that's yeah. uh, shunned upon these days. But uh, it got yeah. us as youngsters into that into that old you know, piece of nature and uh, really, really quite important. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, and bird photography, is that, how long have you been... Into bird yeah, photography. Really, only recently, I only really, really got into bird photography uh, for the last sort of, five or six years. Um, All right. Prior to that, uh, I, mean, I did do some digiscoping, and I'll show you a digiscope picture later on. Today. Oh, great. But, but prior to that, um, just really, well, all wildlife, but particularly birding. Yeah, and I know you've sent uh, sent me four images that we're going to look at today, so we'll we'll do that in a moment, and we, you can talk through you know what they are and where you took them, etc., yeah, etc. Et et Excellent. Okay, that's superb. So now you're retired. How often do you go birding? Well, I have to confess, I do go out certainly four days a week anyway. Really? Uh, so you four days a week, I'll be doing some birding, so almost certainly. So, so I, with, with weather, with the weather's. Okay, of course, so you're pretty much yeah, professional like birder. <laughs> pretty much a professional birder. Yeah, it's, is, it's getting that way. I'd, I'd love to be able to go out four four times a week, uh, but obviously that's not happened during lockdown. Well, no, no. <laughs> well, locally, and you never know, really. As long as you're on your own, Phil, it's fine. Yeah, as long as you're socially distancing, indeed. Okay. Yeah. So many many bird photographers have a speciality. It could be birds in flight. It might be perch birds or waders. Do you have a speciality, Richard, in terms of bird photography? No, I don't. I just enjoy photographing all birds, and I guess like lots of birders, we like to see things that are 
um, I suppose less common, more unusual birds. Right. Uh, but I guess my, if you like, my group of birds speciality would be, as you can see from my website, I'm particularly keen on birds of the Western Palearctic. Okay, so birds uh, in Harry, sort of Europe, Iceland, yeah, Europe, North Africa. Africa uh, okay. East, that's the thing, yeah. Answered. Now you mentioned your website. So what I'll do at the end of the, of this. Uh, um, meeting this this little chat we're having i'll post your website on the uh, with the video so people can go and have a look it's a superb website and i i don't think there's anybody that's taken more birds of the western palearctic than you have it's amazing array and spread of birds you've got so so well done um i'm trying to emulate it by miles behind i have to say uh, your flight took ahead of me <laughs> well hey that might be my speciality <laughs> who knows <laughs> Okay, so in terms of equipment, you said you started off with uh, digiscoping, um, and that yeah. got you into the sort of image, did it, in, in terms well, of photography? Yeah, obviously, I had obviously my being into my, my scope, and then a digiscoping is a little compact camera, very easy to carry around, and that got me into it, really. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think the time when I really wanted to decide that I was going to change and get a proper camera was um, I was on a trip with a friend in Norway, a Norwegian friend, and we were watching a three-toe woodpecker. All right. Best. Yeah. He had a Nikon with a 600, and I had my uh, my scope with the digiscoping, and he got 20 shots in the time. I got one, I think. And All right. So thought, anyway, yeah. I thought at some point I really should make more of an effort. So to change. a bit more practical. That would have been seven or eight years ago, probably. Yeah. So a bit more. Yeah, maybe seven years ago. Yeah. So a bit more practical having a, a DSLR, I guess than a digiscope, which yeah. takes a lot, lot of time to set up. I mean, there are a few people I know digiscope, but uh, hey, it's it's probably great for perch birds, but I'd imagine it's <laughs> nigh on impossible to take a bird in flight. Uh, well, I don't know. Very difficult flight, very difficult flight shots. Yeah. It's just, you've got to balance up whether you want to be a bird or a photographer, because with ex you don't want to carry around with you no. any expensive photography kit and telescope. No, I too understand, much. yeah. Even a big chap like you, you're, you're what, six, must be six, what? Three are you? Six? Uh, about six, six two. Six two. Six okay, so yeah. Yeah, if anyone's if anyone's going to do that, it would be you. But uh, okay, that's fine. So in terms of your ph uh, photography equipment, then, so you said you you had a, a, a chap you were you're out birding with, and he had a Nikon. Is that the way you've gone? You've gone to the dark it, side? Yeah, I mean, because he had a Nikon, was an extremely good photographer, and uh, my brother always used Canon, so I thought I'll use Nikon. All right, and I know we rib each other about it, and uh, I mean just for everyone you know who's viewing, we've obviously known each other for about three or four years, and we've been on probably three European trips or three well, yeah, trips abroad together. Four or five. Four oh, was it? Five trips, <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember we, two, we, two. We did two last year, didn't we? Oh, indeed. Yeah, we did Spain and Iceland last year. Yeah. Oh, we did Morocco as we well. Did Morocco, we did Morocco last year. Morocco and Iceland. All oh, right, and then Spain we've done twice. Yeah, year four, I think, Phil. All right, so yeah, really, really great, great trips. We won't, we won't yeah. talk about your smelly feet at this stage, but <laughs> maybe we'll do that a bit later. But no, fantastic. I've really enjoyed those, and you know, yeah, likewise, great fun. Yeah, as you, as you know, my forte is on the photography side, and and obviously you're a very good photographer, but you're also an extremely knowledgeable birder, which is fantastic to have someone like that on the trips and also we go with uh, Dave Soons don't we who's a really good birder as well yeah. so yeah. A, a, a good group and we had our Finland trip uh, which was supposed to be this year postponed uh, we had a yeah, trip to Spain well postponed all being well so we're going to have a busy year next year 2021 bring it on if we can get through through so. this lockdown so you're a Nikon user you've got a 600 millimetre yeah any other 300 which I use at times so right. my Main camera body is now the 850. Okay. Um, I started with a D800, then I went to a D810, and now the D850. So okay. my D810 is a backup now. The D850. Right. Okay. Well, look, what I think we should do, Rich, is let's have a let's have a look at some of your images, and we'll talk it through. And what, as we talk through, maybe we could talk about you know some of the camera settings you use. Yeah, um, sure. If we can, you know, offer any help to people viewing the video, that'd be fantastic. So, okay, so uh, you sent me four images. Uh, which one are we going to look at first? Which are the spotted? Okay, let's have a look at that spotted red shank first. Okay, there you go. Now, absolutely amazing shot of a spotted red shank in summer plumage or almost yeah, summer plumage. Yeah, that's male. Um, the female little white in the back is summer plumage. That was, um, t I mean, I'm showing you these pictures because for me they have a a story to them and uh, they may okay. not be the best quality but they were just they were just have a good story with them. This, this bird um, I photographed in June 
June 2012, in a place called Pazvik Dalen, which is a little wooded valley that goes down from the sort of northern aspect of Norway. There's a strip of Norway that goes down between Finland and Russia. So there are three countries okay. all kind of right close together. Right, it's yeah. a beautiful remote valley with some superb birds there. And a bird, one bird I particularly wanted to photograph there was this spotted red shank. It's a, tra- a trouble mare. I went for a couple of weeks to various parts of Scandinavia, and I've been in this area for two or three days and uh, seen a couple in flight and not kind of. And then I heard one doing a, a just display flight, and uh, it landed at the top of this dead tree. Obviously, it's a male. Yeah. Um, and it had been a, it had been a thunderstorm, and um, it suddenly stopped. A bit of sun came out, so the, the background behind the bird was quite dark, yeah. but it, the bird was almost lit up. It was beautiful. Yeah, so it's a uh, truly an unusual spot of red shanks in that the but like Dotterel. Um, the, the females are literally on the breeding ground for four or five weeks, beginning of May to the beginning of June. Yeah. Once they lay the eggs and the males do everything, they do all the incubating and the females go, fly back south again. So, um, yeah, uh, I guess we, we do see them every now and again in, in the UK on do. passage, is it? We wintering, we get juveniles, right. but it's quite rare to see one in the UK in, in absolutely um, mint breeding plumage. They might be coming in or going out of plumage, but... Yeah. You're lucky to get one looking like this in the UK. That's it's a, certainly a beautiful bird, and actually not not yeah. not an easy image to expose. I'd have thought. So, in um, ter- terms of your camera settings, in what sort of mo- what mode do you use with well, your Nikon? This, this was a digiscoped image. Okay, right. Uh, so this was this, this so this was with a with a camera with a little little um, compact Panasonic DMC wow. FS16 on yeah. my Swarovski scope, um, obviously on a tripod. Yeah. Um, my the shutter speed was one three twentieth f four point four. ISO was only hundred actually, and the right. exposure value of, of naught zero. Yeah. Um, and it, I was lucky with the light on the day, Phil, because it was the darkest background behind the bird. It wasn't too glary, so um, yeah. And it, it, it was perched up there for ten or fifteen minutes, singing and displaying. So I had, I had a good chance to get a couple and, of shots that were worth keeping. And to digiscope that, that's that's superb. So absolutely brilliant shot. So well done. A bird I'd love to see. I know we're we're off to Finland uh, next year, hopefully. Um, we'll see them, yeah. Not yeah, sure we're going to go that far north, but well, you sh- I think we will be. Just about right. we will be. Yes, yeah. so we've okay. got a chance. Good. Well, I'll put that one on the list definitely. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's move on to your next image, Richard. Um, we're going to look at the uh, squacker or the barn owl. Yeah, let's squack a heron next. Yeah. Okay, there you go. This. Um was on another great trip. I went with my brother and um, a couple of other people to the Danube Delta that was in May 2017. And we had four days going around the Delta in a little electrical boat really? uh, with a guide. And the, the boat acted like a mobile hide. The Brilliant. Having a little electrical motor was so quiet and it was just brilliant. I mean, wonderful place to be in May time. Um, we'd go out early morning and go in the evening. Uh, the light was gorgeous. The wildlife was superb. <coughs> really such an unsupported area. Um, all sorts of birds we saw. All sorts of obviously herons and pelicans and all sorts of fantastic wildlife. Yeah, and this, this one wildlife. taken with, uh, was it your Nikon at this stage? Or? Yeah. yeah this okay. with, uh, at this point I had progressed from my uh, digiscoping. This was, a, this was a Nikon D810, 600mm lens and... Uh, the boat was stable enough to be able to use a tripod in the boat. So we were all sitting on big Brilliant. bags with a tripod low down on the boat. Um, and uh, so, yeah, DA-10, that was shutter speed. Was, I was taking in the evening at uh, 4 thousandths of a second, F5.6, ISO 400. That's a yeah. squacker, obviously, and it's a squacker heron, and it's breeding plumage, yeah. walking over. So beautiful colours, I mean. Yeah, beautiful. Like are... Acres and acres of lily pads, millions of frogs calling. This was hunting and um, catching fish actually. But so, superb, superb pose. And you said F56, was it? F, did you say? F56, that was, yeah. So, yeah. a fair, fair bit of depth of field, so pretty much tip of bill to tail yes, in focus. On, yeah, on, yes, on that view, it should all be, that's all, should all be, all be good really for focus, yeah. So, in ter- terms of F stops, do you, what, you know, what are you looking to do with your F stop in terms of bird photography? Are you. Are you well, so it depends on the light and depends on the shutter speed, doesn't it? I, I seem to default by having my eyes at 400 most of the time. I don't often change the eye. Of the right. three things, the sort of a shutter speed, um, aperture and ISO, I tend to change the ISO last. And obviously I will up the ISO yeah. if I have to, um, if I need to up my shutter speed. So 
in good light it'd be 400 if I think about it I might bring the ISO down a bit sometimes but it's normally around about four, well, it's normally right. 400 so you keep your ISO the same and then pretty much you're using the shutter well, speed the same, and then I, my number one priority for me would be shutter speed yeah. uh, and then if I can get away you know, by bringing the shutter speed down then, yeah. and then I might up my, my depth of field up my F number to get a bigger depth of field right. okay um, yeah, that's the way I tend to So do this it. sort of shot, I guess, shutter speed you said was what about? Yeah, it was, it was, I mean, four thousandths of a second. So really, I could have gone f eight there. I could have brought the eye right. down further. Yeah. I didn't, but I could have done yeah. because it was it was so much light. Yeah, that's also a challenge again with a long lens. Is that you know you want to keep the shutter speed fairly high because this bird could fly away and you want to get a flight shot. So it's it's always a balance, isn't it, about yeah, in terms of your settings. Yeah, the, the boat was fairly stable, but obviously not as stable as it could be sort of thing. So again, you've got to think about having your shutter speed maybe a bit higher than normal then with a sort of yeah. slightly unstable. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you but shut... Like all these things, Phil, you, you know as well as me, you know, you sometimes you need to, sometimes you don't have time to think about all these things. No, when no, the no. So you shut a speed to eradicate any motion blur and you use the f-stop to get some depth in terms of focus, getting the whole bird in. And you use yeah. those two pretty much, you, you alternate those two settings and keep ISO at around about 400 all the time. Yes, that's okay. what I tend to do. Oh, understood. And as, and as you know, uh, for me, unlike you, and unlike most photographers, rightly or wrongly, I tend to leave I don't tend to change my exposure values. No, no, indeed. Yeah, but l looking at this, well, I mean, that's, that's, me. that's just me. I, 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 you know, well, I, the, I was saying earlier in, the, in this video, the beauty of bird photography is no one settings right. We've all got our own style, and uh, yeah. we all got a way of doing things. But looking at this, you can see it's a six hundred mil, um, because the bokeh on it is absolutely brilliant. You know the way the the background that's, drops yeah. out of focus. And you've got yeah. that focus plane in front of the bird and on the bird. It's it's a yeah. it's a stunning shot. So, well done, mate. It's a you know, I say I'd, I'd encourage people to go to your website because you've got some amazing uh, photographs on there. So, um, okay, shall we move on to the next one? Yeah. Yeah, okay, let's the barn so we're looking at the barn owl now. Probably my favourite bird, I have to say. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that's a stunner as well. Now, was it on a, a a, a log is it or a post or well, well, sort of post yeah I mean, I mean I'm sure all most photographers of to do much bird photography have got some nice shots of barn owls yeah um, this, this is one I took at home in the Cotswolds in the spring of this year it was an area where I've, I've seen a couple of barn owls hunting quite a lot right uh, for me I'm, one of the things I really enjoy about bird photography is putting the work in to get the shot like perhaps finding your own bird working out how you're going to do it watch what the bird does and then plan from there. When all those things come together, that is so much more satisfying than just being <coughs> shown a bird that someone else has found. So yeah, I agree. And, these, and you certainly. Barn owls, I've been watching them for a while, thinking and seeing where they like to hunt. Yeah. And I just made a very quick um, sort of makeshift hut, makeshift hide. All right. Uh, Excellent. And I put that that sort of log or post in the ground. Yeah. Oh. 15, 20 yards in front of my hide, if you like, and sat in it. Yeah. And uh, within, oh, I don't know, half an hour at the most, I had the bird sat on that uh, bit of wood just in front of me. That's fantastic. Um, I was yeah. lucky. It was great the way it worked out. But then, and then, <laughs> then I was thinking, with that post, have I got that too high, too low? Because I think you really want a more of a brownie background behind it. But yeah. had I set it lower in the grass, it would have been more obscured by the, the, um, the tall grasses. Yeah, in front. Me. You're so, right. Okay. Actually, with that evening light and things, I think the colour on it, with the sky behind it, works out fine. So and, I love the colours on it. Yeah, and it's beautifully exposed, pin sharp, absolute detail. I'm not sure the viewers can see the detail, but it's superb detail, focus from you know <laughs> top to bottom. In both the eyes, nice. Yeah, so, yeah no, I, was, I was chuffed with that. It's lovely. Superb. And the, the moral in this story, I guess, is you put the time in, you're going to get some decent shots. Because I know you've already always done that. You're a you're a really good birder. And I think right. the other thing is, if yeah, you want. You time in you got to work out it haven't you and uh, often like you feel i'm sure we, we get nothing but when something when a plan works out it's just very satisfying and, and the other th other thing i was going to mention there was the fact that if you understand behavior of a bird you know the more you can understand the behavior of a species the more likely you're going to get a great photograph Absolutely. and this that demonstrates yeah. it uh, beautifully so superb shot richard well done uh, another one i wish i had taken Okay, so let's uh, move on to the uh, last image, which is the uh, Palace's leaf yeah, palace warbler. warbler. Yeah. 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 Um, the, 
this autumn has been quite an exceptional autumn for uh, unusual rare migrants in the UK, not not just from, from, from really all corners of the globe, us from the from the sort of east, far east, um, you know, from the states as well. It's been all around the country. It's been quite an amazing autumn. This bird is a palisade warbler, and I've seen several in the past, but never managed to get a decent photograph. It's a beautiful little bird, about the size of a gold crest. Yeah. <clears throat> so actually, the second part of this Latin name is pro regulus, which means and the crests are the regulus gen genus, so it means like gold crest, really. Right. Um, very active, yeah. flitting around, moss green with a sort of yellowish supercilium and wing bars, like a lemon yellow rock. They are, I mean, just beautiful little things. And I, uh, and I, I, I photographed this one at Fauna in Norfolk, and it's on. You, you can see how small it is, but if you compare it to the size of those um, those thorns on in, on the roses it's perched, and you can see what a tiny little bird it is. But uh, yeah. I think that's come all the way from southern Siberia to our shores. Amazing, uh, isn't it? They are actually becoming more common, and as as, as are yellow browns, even more so in the UK, when they're it's a bit more of a westward drift, westward drift on their migration. But um, yeah, yeah. So we we get how many how many a season do we get here? A handful, this, isn't it? This year has been exceptional. Right. This year there have been about eighty reported in the UK, which is far more than normal. But you know, over the past ten or fifteen years, years numbers in the UK have been increasing. But this has been an exceptional autumn. And I have to say, Richard, is that absolutely stunning uh, picture of the of a palace of warbler? Because I've phot photographed them once, and uh, I know they lead an arboreal lifestyle, and they're always moving. And to get one, you know, get one out in the open like this is is amazing. It's, yeah, it's a rarity cool. with a, such a great background as well. So brilliant! Yeah. Well done. It's time, isn't it? I mean, that that was with um, my six hundred and the eight fifty, and with a one point four. Teleconverter on it. I was, I was, I was handheld. Um, I had the eyes on that at six forty up a bit, um, one eight hundredth of a second. So, I mean, for most small birds, I should say perhaps when I when I can with the lights good and things, um, I do use the one point four teleconverter. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I tend to with my six hundred, and because it gives you a bit more depth anyway. Yes, um, yes, right, uh, and yes. you know you end up with <laughs> very sharp images even with the 1.4 very very little degradation in image with a 1.4 yeah, teleconverter yeah, I, I agree I think 1.4 is great once you go above that then for me yeah. 1.7 okay sometimes but I, I don't want to go above 1.4 converter at all no really. nor me I, I don't carry the two times for example it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of pointless yeah. so let's uh, let's uh, get you get us back on screen so look Richard fantastic now as I say, a lot of these fantastic Im images are on your website, and I will leave a link uh, on this video. Uh, I'll leave a link on the video to, to your website so people can go take a look. So, a few other questions before we, we leave, Richard. So, you know, massive experience birding. Have you got a favourite bird? And if so, why? Well, I've got so many birds I like, but I'd have to say, living where I do live in the Cotswolds, um, my favourite bird, I think, is the hobby. All uh, right. For all sorts of reasons, my favourite group of birds would be waders. Short right. Birds. Okay. Individual bird hobby. Why? Because it's a migratory bird of prey. Really, our only proper true summer visitor, apart from the red footed falcon. Yeah. Falcon. Yeah. Um, its speed, its agility. Um, it knocks spots on a peregrine falcon. Um, right. <laughs> in a way that a challenge to find them in the summertime, and they're just such beautiful, elegant birds. And I, I know you've you've yeah. over, over the years have found quite a few of them because you yeah, basically you know where they are. We do, yeah. do monitor them um, as best right. we can if possible, and uh, yeah. yeah, they're doing okay, and uh, they're just fantastic to watch. Yeah, very, very, very few in, in our area around North Chip, uh, North Wiltshire, but uh, they're around run along the River Avon yeah, every now and nest, again. When but, they're nesting, they're very secretive. Yeah, indeed, uh, and would need far greater birding skills than I've got to find them. Uh, I'll have to go out with you one day, but uh, <laughs> that, that'll be on the cards, no doubt. Okay, Richard, look, thanks very much for joining us today. Uh, in fact, this, it was our inaugural uh, bird table episode, so I think you'll probably go down in the annals of history, or is that the annals of history? No, the annals of history as, as the first guest on the bird table. So thanks very much. Well, and, uh, honoured, honoured. <laughs> thank you. And uh, I'll see you birding soon, hopefully, when uh, we come out of this lockdown. Yeah, good look, look forward to it. All the best. Thank you. Thanks, Bye now. Bye. So there you have it, the first episode of The Bird Table. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for sitting through 
30 minutes plus of uh, video. Uh, also, thank you to my special guest, Richard Tyler. Can't wait to go burning with him in the very near future. Uh, if you like what you saw today, then please uh, like and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.